Please pray with me. Holy Spirit of God, take our minds and think through them. Take these words and speak through them and set our hearts on fire for love of thee. Amen. It began as a pretty typical day. I got up, showered, dressed, had my prayer time, ate a quick breakfast, and headed for my job in the Texas Medical Center. I walked into my office and was greeted by my secretary to go over the events of the day. It was completely full, except for one hour carved out for lunch. The department I had been asked to lead was in the midst of a major strategic planning effort involving departments across the institution. A crazy number of seven goals had been identified, and we were in the midst of trying to narrow those down and identify strategies to meet those goals with the help of more than 100 stakeholders. Some of the staff were challenged by this complex and time-draining process, but for me, I thrived under the complexity of charting a course into the unknown future. We breezed through our scheduled morning brainstorming sessions and I grabbed a quick salad downstairs before heading to my office to blow through emails that had gathered that morning. Again, I was greeted by my secretary. She had waited to leave for her lunch hour so that she could pass along a message from a friend who had called me. I had alerted her the week before that this particular friend was going through hard times, and if he called the office, she should let him know my availability that day when I could return his call. So I entered my office, shut the door, dialed his number, and said, I'm here. I've got 45 minutes, but I'm here. And so for the next 45 minutes, I listened to this dear man estranged from most of his family and friends. I listened to him as he held the hand of his dying mother and poured out a lifetime of sadness, anger, and regret. I didn't know what to say to him. I never seemed to know what to say. But I knew that I didn't want to say something hurtful or dismissive like, don't worry about the past, or you know she's going to a better place. As the minutes ticked away and I wolfed down the salad as I listened and tried to find encouraging and supportive words, I realized I needed to wrap up the call and hustle down to the conference room in the next building and start the afternoon sessions. As we said our goodbyes and promised to talk later that night, I hung up the phone and paused for a moment. My office seemed to have changed. It had become a liminal space, a threshold between one existence, one reality, and another. My friend and I had encountered God in our conversation And I don't know about him, but I was changed. As I walked out of my office and into the fray that was my day, I knew I was different. I had not felt so fully alive in a long time as I had for those 45 minutes. It was this experience that finally put to rest my eight-year struggle on discerning whether or not I had felt a call to the ordained priesthood. And it happened on just a typical day. Looking at our reading from Mark, it seems like the writer of our gospel is just providing an outline of a typical day in Jesus' ministry. Jesus and his disciples have walked to Capernaum, a town on the northern edge of the Sea of Galilee. 
The gospel evidence is that they walked to many towns in the region of Galilee, but Capernaum seemed to be the center of Jesus' ministry. It's the Sabbath, so he does what a faithful Jew would do and goes to the synagogue. Jesus then fulfills his right as a Jewish male to teach. And the people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority. Now, we don't know what it was that he taught them. Mark does not relay that information to us. But we do know that it was so very different than the nitpicking teaching of the scribes. This was the people's liminal moment, unknowingly encountering God and crossing a threshold by experiencing God's radical teaching through the words of Jesus. Jesus then demonstrates more of his authority by casting out a demon. Mark has quite a few exorcisms in his gospel, along with many healings performed by Jesus. All typical stuff on a typical day for Jesus. After recounting the calling of the disciple, Mark outlines this first day of Jesus' ministry, pointing out to his readers that these are the kinds of things that happen when Jesus is present. Three years ago, tomorrow, this is what happened when you were present in this very place. You first shouted, it is! It is our will that Sharon be ordained a priest. And then you shouted, we will! We will uphold and support Sharon in her ministry. And you have, all of you, whether you realized it or not. You helped me learn the craft of the priesthood from growing more comfortable under the Klieg lights pouring down on that altar in the spotlight of being up front to the soft lights of spiritual intimacy as you shared the joys sorrows, and challenges of your lives with me so that together we could sift through them all and find God at work. The first time I preached in this pulpit, former rector Chuck Treadwell expected me to tell my story. Since I would rather preach the gospel than talk about myself, yes, I would rather preach the gospel than talk about myself, I told my story in an 83-character Twitter feed that went like this. I love God. I thought God wanted me to give a little of myself each day to help build the kingdom. I was wrong. God wanted more. Crazy. As you can imagine, Chuck was not amused. But I justified my approach by saying that I am going to be telling all of you my story for as long as I am at St. Paul's. And I have. Sometimes using words, sometimes using metaphors, sometimes using actions. I have told you my entire life story. Today's story about how I finally, after years of struggle, heard God's call on my life is my last story that needed to be told. It needed to be told not because you needed to hear the entire trajectory of my life. No, it needed to be told to remind you that God has a call on your life. Crazy, isn't it? But God is calling you into ministry, most likely not the ordained ministry, but ministry nonetheless. And that ministry will be a blessing to your family, to this congregation of St. Paul's, and to the greater Waco community.
One of you told me early last summer, September, September, that it was time for me to go. I feigned a false look of hurt and responded with, trying to get rid of me, are you? No was a reply, a quiet no. That it is past time for you to be a rector of your own church, this person replied. And so here we are. Am I ready? Are we ever really ready to do the work God has set before us? Are we ever fully ready to cross those liminal thresholds of our lives in response to God's call? Maybe, sometimes. But we are equipped with the grace of God in all things. And what more do we really need? God has given us grace, gifts to use for God's glory. But yet, yet, we can only do that work through God's grace. Crazy, isn't it? 